My name is Suzanne Johnson and I'm a gynaecologist from Southampton. This is a live scan, as they were doing the scan together, of a patient with endometriosis. And in this case we'll demonstrate an ovarian endometrioma and deep endometriosis in the lower rectum. The International Deep Endometriosis Analysis Group, the IDEA group, published this paper in 2016 and gave us a systematic approach to scan the pelvis in women with suspected endometriosis. Using this system, you carry out a systematic routine pelvic ultrasound, but especially looking for features of endometriosis. We then look for the sliding sign in the patch of Douglas, for nodules of deep endometriosis, and soft markers such as site-specific tenderness and pelvic mobility. As I'm going through the scan, I'm mentally building a, a report in my head, looking for features of endometriosis, such as in the uterus, whether the uterus is antiverted and retroflexed, if there's adenomyosis, looking for ovarian endometriomas and whether the ovaries are kissing or not, looking for retrocervical deep endometriosis in the torus or uterosacral ligaments, and whether this is attached to and or involving the posterior vagina and bowel, looking for other bowel nodules, a frozen pelvis, and lastly, when there's some urine in the bladder, looking at the bladder, lower ureters, and the kidneys. When a scan is complicated, I like to break it up. Always do a very gentle transvaginal ultrasound and be more or less systematic every time. And when you find something, think, what is it and where is it? In small areas, break it up into torus, uterosacral ligaments, bowel and vagina. So starting the scan, this is a longitudinal view of a normal antiverted uterus. It's at both antiverted and antiflexed, um, and there's no obvious adenomyosis. Looking in the transverse plane, you can see that the endometrial cavity looks to be a normal shape, and probably the uterus is a normal shape. Next, looking at the endometrium, and you can't help but see that there's a coil here and one of the arms appears to be sticking into the myometrium. So it's a good po uh, point to do a 3D scan of the uterus and on rendering that you can see that the coil is clearly perforated through the uh, endometrial fundus and at least a bit of it uh, is in the myometrium. Then we go to look at the right ovary both in the longitudinal plane and in the transverse plane. And you can see here that there's a little cyst. You can see it in more close up there. And this, using the IOTA criteria, is a unilocular cyst with no solid component and ground glass echogenicity. And this is a small ovarian endometrioma. Now, where is the right ovary? It's much more obvious to do this in the transverse plane. So this is just the top of the cervix with the internal os there. And the right ovary is very close. Looking at this area in a bit more detail, that was the right uterosacral ligament. And so you can see that the right ovary is adherent to the right uterosacral ligament. Looking at the left ovary now, here again is the antiverted uterus. And you can see this ovary is low and it's adherent to just above the torus. This is where the bladder attaches to the uterus, internal cervical os, torus. And this is where the uterosacral ligaments attach to the back of the um, cervix. So you can see there the left ovary is low and in the transverse plane we're now just at the bottom of the endometrial cavity so just above the level of the torus and this is um, the left ovary seen in transverse. Um, there's the torus and you can see in this little video clip that the ovary is low and that there are some adhesions. Are the ovaries kissing though? This is really good to look in the transverse plane again. Transverse um, just above the torus, right ovary here, left ovary here. Um, and then you can just very gently do the sliding sign. You can do the sliding sign in lots of different areas in the pelvis. And here you can see that both ovaries have some adhesions, but they're not kissing. Now I like to specifically look at the torus. And the way I do that is I look at in the longitudinal plane at the uterus, where the bladder attaches, internal cervical os, torus where the uterosacral ligaments um, attach to the back of the cervix and then keeping my eye on that point just there 
I then rotate the probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise till I get to the transverse plane and that shows that the torus will be here and then you can gently press again and looking for the sliding sign at the torus. You can just see the left ovary peeking in there. Um, now this torus looks normal, I can't see any obvious deep endometriosis there. So we need to look at a lower level below the torus. So the torus is up here somewhere. This is the bottom of the cervix. So torus will be there. Um, and we can see something here. And you have to think, well, what is that? We're well below the level of the torus. So let's break it up into separate areas. Um, what you can see here is you can see the, the top of the vagina here. This is the, the bottom of the cervix where the vagina attaches to the cervix. And here you can see some deep endometriosis in the very thickened um, um, ligamentous tissue surrounding it. Here you can see a bowel nodule. And this is deep endometriosis in the bowel. You can here see some normal muscularis layer. This is the anterior uh, rectal wall. And this is the dark muscularis with that very fine um, line which is between the longitudinal and the circular muscle fibers in the muscularis layer. So this is normal muscularis going into a nodule of deep endometriosis in the bowel wall. So this is in the longitudinal plane. If you then turn on that 90 degrees anticlockwise to the transverse plane, you can see the ligamentous deep endometriosis here and quite separately the bowel endometriosis just there and when you're looking at these be sure to work out which is which which is ligament and which is bowel so if we're looking at the ligamentous deep endometriosis and to see this better you often have to increase your depth so that you're um, making your field of view much smaller put your focus up to this area and go for a high frequency preferably with harmonics in the highest range and that's how you'll get to see this area better so we know that uh, there's deep endo in the ligaments and in the bowel. Let's look at the ligaments first. Is it adherent to and or involving the vagina? So what we're doing is we've angled back a little bit more. We're in the posterior vaginal fornix um, and we're looking for this deep endometriosis. So you can see normal vaginal wall. You can see the ligamentous deep endometriosis and it's attached to but it's not involving it there isn't a vaginal nodule next we're going to look at the relationship between the deep endo in the ligaments and the bowel so what i do here is staying in the posterior fornix i'm going to sweep both ways in the longitudinal plane and then when i find the bowel rotate on it and see what i can see You can still see the ligament, you can see the ovarian endometrioma, and here comes the bowel, and I've had to rotate on it to try and get a better view. And just at the end of that clip, you can actually see that that was the bottom of the pouch of Douglas. So I'm expecting the pouch of Douglas to be non-obliterated, but this uh, very low ligamentous lesion attached to a bowel nodule and attached to the vagina, but not involving a vaginal nodule. So let's now look at the bowel, look at the bowel nodule, look at the size of it and the angle. So measuring the size, if it's not an entirely straight line, you have to bend the line, otherwise you foreshorten the, um, the length of it, you underestimate it. And when you're measuring the depth, be sure not to include any of the ligamentous deep endometriosis. We're just looking at the thickness of muscularis. And again, you can see the normal muscularis coming in at one end there. Then looking um, at the uh, transverse width of it, so that's a, a generous measurement, and to, you don't want to underestimate it. Um, and this is the, um, the diameter of the bowel lesion, so you can see this is half of the circumference, and again separate from the ligamentous. And looking at the angle that this bowel makes, is it very retracted or not? This is more than 90 degrees, so the bowel's not much retracted by this um, bowel deep endometriosis. And you can also render anything you like, of course, in the pelvis on 3D. And when you take a 3D volume, you have it displayed as a longitudinal view, a transverse view. Look how narrow the bowel looks in transverse on 3D. Then you get um, a coronal view and you can render that. And I like to render it just to get a different view. Sometimes it's very surprising. Here you can see the normal muscularis going in and out of the, the bowel lesion. This is the 
deep endo in the bowel this is the deep endo in the ligaments and you can see that there's this is an angle of more than 90 degrees normal muscularis so then you ask yourself is the bowel nodule stenosing or not and there are some surrogate markers for this is it more than 10 millimeters in thickness no this one wasn't does it cover 50 percent of the bowel no it didn't and it was more than 90 degrees in angle so this bowel does not look like a stenosing lesion and for more detail i would recommend this book to you um, it's very good so having thought about the the ligamentous de the vagina the bowel just to see what is the relationship now between the other surrounding structures and again in the transverse plane you can see the right ovary here there's then a gap and that's when the deep endometriosis bowel um, appears so if you take a, a little moving image it becomes more clear we've got the right ovary just there the ligamentous de here and then finding the bowel nodule rotating on that you can see it's very close to the right ovary this bowel nodule there's the ligamentous de and you can see the posterior vagina itself is adherent but it's not involved and that's a very important point to make so the relationship between the deep endo in the ligaments the normal vagina it's close to the right ovary and here is the the bowel again and um, this is just another video clip of the same thing and you can every time you can see the posterior uh, bowel wall just there that's nice and normal it's always deep endo is always in this side always the anterior bowel wall the posterior is always normal Having done all that, you mustn't forget the bladder. Um, looking for a sliding sign. How does the bladder slide on the uterus? Looking for endometriosis in the bowel wall. Looking at where the area where the lower ureters uh, empty into the, the bladder. Um, and looking at the kidneys. But I'll, I'll do all that in a different video. So my conclusion of the scan was that there's a normal anterior compartment. That the uterus is antiverted with no adenomyosis but with an oblique marina coil. There's a small right ovarian endometrioma and some bilateral ovarian adhesions but the ovaries are not kissing. That there is some deep endometriosis in the uterosacral ligaments near the torus with a small plaque of lower rectum deep endometriosis which looks non-stenosing and a normal vagina and an only partly occluded pouch of Douglas very low down. And I usually draw a little cartoon, which patients find very useful, but uh, also sometimes the surgeons. You can see this is my cartoon of the longitudinal plane, looking at bladder, vagina, posterior fornix. You can see there's the marina coil. There's that right ovary with some adhesions and an endometrioma. Here is the deep endometriosis in the ligaments. And this is the deep endometriosis in the bowel wall. And there are adhesions, but the posterior vaginal fornix itself is normal. And if we look in the transverse plane, this is a section taken at the level of the torus with the right ovary attached to the uterosacral ligament and that plaque of bowel deep endo non-stenosing just close to it and just one showing that the ovaries are, are not kissing. This patient had a laparoscopy and on vaginal examination they noted a 3 centimeter rectovaginal nodule, a small ovarian endometrioma, some ovarian adhesions, and no significant obliteration of the pouch of Douglas. But they did see this low down in the pouch of Douglas. And you can see this is where that very deep rectal nodule is adherent to the um, epithelium of the pouch of Douglas. So you could see far more on ultrasound than you can at laparoscopy. So some take home messages. Look through the posterior vaginal fornix to examine the pelvis at a low level. Break the examination up into small sections, ligaments, bowel, vagina. And look in the transverse plane at the relationship between tissues, including the sliding sign. For more details on endometriosis and ultrasound, there's a video on the website. Thank you.